Folks, welcome to the Jake Feinberg Show. What an honor it is to be joined by three gentlemen who I have just met personally, but know that on a spiritual realm, we were always, we've always been together. Nathan, Theo, Bill, welcome to the Jake Feinberg thank Show. You, thank you, uh, JD. Man, it's an honor for us to be here. Uh, it's been a lot of years putting my uh, music together and uh, that you recognize that I did something. It, it uh, throws me back to the reason why I'm alive. Uh, I remember when uh, I was all real fucked up, messed up out there on, um, in Bisbee, Arizona. And I, I had a uh, chance to meet Stanley Clark. Stanley Clark saw me in a, a, and uh, on his way to the airport, watched me play for a little bit. Uh, you know, he saw me all night and the night before. But he said, I mean, as a badass, to uh, Patricia, who owned the stock exchange. And because he said that, it really changed my life. It I want to be clear, though. Hold on. Let's just slow this down. He saw you play a gig, like he just showed up and saw you Actually, play. Actually, yeah, I was playing uh, the, night at, the night before. There was a jam session, um, and Stanley's band had opened up that jam session and played. Well, I got, or I got, or no, they closed the show. That's what it was. Sure. They closed the show. And uh, I opened up, so um, I did a thing called Mona, and uh, I was way out there, man. And I played my heart out. And he went up to his room and he got his own cell phone and took some video of me. And then later, uh, you know, when he left, after we had the master's class and everything, all this really changed my life. He, he said that, you know, the guy's a badass or... And he that, mentioned that to somebody. I, I just to feel Patricia, like, his yeah. dear friend. Who on the stock because exchange, yeah. because I just want to be clear. I'm going to t touch on this with each of the guys, but to me, like in music, the respect is most important. I right? did it, it was especially from the validation that that gave. Like he was saying earlier, the validation that came from that gave me um, a, a reason to turn my boat back towards creating music. Absolutely for the for the for the sheer fact that I was given the gift to do it. And I was actually, maybe I was, I had something, you know, that was important. Theo, I want to ask you a question. <laughs> I don't know. Looking back on it now, when those record, talk a little bit about when those record companies approached you. Yeah, I was very young. And I just wonder, not not that there's regret, but like, what if they came to you now? How would, uh, you be diff how would it be different? Yeah, I think I would probably take the deal, but I would have to have, you know, a lot more um, involvement with, people who I trust. I was by myself. I was parking my car in a parking lot and I had a 69 Dodge Charger. I was parking it in a parking lot in Los Angeles, in Hollywood for Christ's sake. And I was going to this building and I just felt really bad about the whole thing. I just didn't think I was ready to present what I really could evolve to become, which is where I, I feel I am now with my music, I feel like I've matured to the point where I can really express and say, with the help of people like Bill sure. and, and Nathan, I can actually do something that makes a mark, that shows me, and it's without their help, I wouldn't be able to do it, so. Nathan, uh, can you, do you remember the first time that you laid eyes on, on Theo? Mm, I think so. Well, let's talk about that. Uh, I was probably at uh, here in Tucson. There used to be a, an institution, a 420 show, uh, that uh, was initiated by uh, Mike Bigalia and Randy Clemens. And, wow. and, and after Mike Bigalia passed, uh, there was a rotation of uh, guitar players that used to sit in every week. And uh, prob I didn't meet. I want to see your eyes. I didn't yeah. meet Ted personally that week, but I'm pretty certain it was at one of those shows. Was the first time I heard Ted play, and uh, it, it was just apparent to me that uh, it was really what guitar players are going for, because <laughs> a lot of people uh, sit around and learn songs and try to sound like uh, like other players and there's a lot of value to that but you don't often hear someone that 
no matter what genre that they're playing and that they put their own stamp on it and they sound great within the genre but they sound like themselves and uh, it was as somebody that spent a lot of time at live shows and appreciating music sure uh, well I'm like shedding a lot but also like doing the hard work I, for you in your life this is a two, two part question how has music healed you psych psychically and what is the correlation between a good baseball team and a good band? Uh, wow, those are really good questions. Uh, Welcome to the Jake Fiber Show. Both dude. of them are really great, <laughs> great questions. Uh, music is uh, music is a, an, an ongoing path in life, and uh, it, uh, it 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 provides just uh, lessons that cross. Uh, that uh, cross-sect every aspect of life. Um, when uh, I started playing uh, versus where I am now, in some respects it's different and in some respects it's the same. Because whether you're talking about the beginner or whether you're talking about the master, they still, they both have uh, a world to, a, a world that they can learn, that That's they right. can improve That's those exactly themselves right. with even a master has a repertoire that can be expanded and can learn other things and a beginner mm. also so mm. music belongs to everybody and uh, I'm deriving a lot of spiritual healing every day Good. from my commitment to uh, to play music in ways that really go beyond words that, that I can and what I can answer in the radio interview but I hope I did a decent job with that <laughs> question what about baseball uh, with, okay. Because Bill Walton used to, I mean, obviously. Uh, no, I'll tell you. Yeah, go ahead. It, I'll tell you. Yeah, this break is it down. Opinion. If you want, if, 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 if By the way, if, do you ever go to my father's place in Roslyn? Yeah, okay. I met Roy Buchanan there. That's, because Jeff Skunk Baxter's playing there. My, fa my father was the accountant for the Marcello Brothers. Oh, um, I did. Right, that's record. a whole other, that's yeah. a whole other. Yeah. So, and so, yeah, the analogy so, there. So, the thing is, if you want to win big. You gotta have a, a, a shut down lefty in the rotation. <laughs> <laughs> dude, I'm a lefty, dog. I love it, dude. That is perfect. Bill Pierce, man, you know, um, can you talk about what inspires you today? What surprises you today? And where you feel you, st you still need to grow the most as a professional or, or, or human? Oh, that's a good question. Um, it's still all a learning process. I don't think I'll ever stop learning. Um, You're open to that? Oh, definitely. I mean, the day I think I know it all is the day I should throw in a towel. Yeah. Um, but you know a shit ton, though. That's what I'm saying. You seem to be a man of deep, deep knowledge. I, I know of a fair amount, but... <laughs> so where, where, where would you like to grow? Where, I mean, just I, I like putting stuff out in the ether because it tends to manifest. I mean, there's there's always more to learn in terms of modality. There's in terms of listening, in terms of working with others. I mean, I, I think I know what what I'm doing, and then I hear the guys that really do know what they're doing. Yeah, right. And I'm in awe. Right. I I, I look at the guys who are really on top of their game, and I said, I, I wish I could do that. And that makes me want to go back in and then start practicing more looking at what they're doing and say, how do they do that? How do you feel about like being able to sort of, do you feel like in some ways music is more mentally challenging than physically challenging? In terms of like, what I noticed about Theo is just like within seconds, his ego, we all have ego, his ego was out of the way and he was able to become a conduit for information coming through him from above. And so, like, a lot of cats have a hard time getting out of their own way. Do you feel like that's something you want to work on? Oh, definitely. I mean, if you can't check your ego at the door, you're never going to figure out what's going on. But I want to, I mean, I'm talking about it, Bill Pierce's individual voice. I, it's something I have, to, I have to work on as much as anybody does, being able to know when, when not to play. Yeah. That's right. If you don't feel it, no, don't, I mean, that's something that, you know, is a lost art, you know? I look at... So many of the jam bands I see out there, and one of the things I noticed between the real pros and the jam bands, the jam bands, everybody's trying to play all the time. 
They all want to yeah. play all the notes. And that's not no a space. There's no space. Space is music. A conversation requires that you shut up and listen from time to time. Um, can you talk about your relationship, Theo, just with these cats? Oh like, my God. Well, so for, um, or do you want to do it through a tune, maybe? No, no. All right. First off, I want to tell you that Nathan is a um, recent friend of mine. With them in the last five years, you know, six years. But Bill and I go back to when we were kids and we were wow. just deep, dirty, wet behind the ears. Deep. And so, and so I've influenced. Uh, and then this was in the OP here? Yeah, right here wow. in uh, the old Pueblo. Um, and uh, like, like I was intimating earlier, Bill Pierce and I uh, were uh, the first band in Tucson, Arizona to bring to the stage Grateful Dead music. Hold on, that's with, a bold statement. With two drummers, bass player, pretty much the same setup the Grateful Dead had with a big ass fucking sound system that Bill provided. Oh my God. It was like a Myers almost, it was incredible. And we would do this at a little bar called Mudbugs in oh Tucson. You, you, by the way, I wanna give a shout out because Rhythm has healed me and uh, who were the who were the drummers? Okay, so we at that point we had uh, Cos Osmond. And, is is uh, he still with us? Yeah, still and, I mean, I mean, I'm not uh, track this guy. Down. And, then, not... and then there were two substituted drummers, whichever one we would have was Bill's little brother Rick Pierce and Dan Meyer. Dan Meyer is guest, but uh, uh, Rick still survives and plays with me today. Good with Elevenacity every Friday night. So and Bill does too when he's got time. Theo, have you played on psychedelics? All the time. Well, like for the first two years, it was an experiment that we did. Back when you had that dead band, yeah, you were that, doing like an was, acid test. Bill and I, yeah, and he, you know, Bill's responsible with a couple other guys of getting me to go to a show and actually see at Pyramid Did Bill Lake. get you to, to the Nevada? The Pyramid, yeah. He we, went to Pyramid? Yeah. We Bill went, was the Pyramid. Go, I did not go to Pyramid. No? You what? Went there? Oh, okay. Because that was his kickstart. Yeah, what was your first dead show? My first dead show was Holly Pavilion. 1980? 82. And, and you got asked Nathan his. Lee Oscar place. came on stage yeah. that night. Do you remember that? He played that, wow. The guy from Ward. Because that might be the only thing I listen to with my daughters is early 80s Grateful Dead. It's off the rails. Right. It's totally freaking. Yeah. That's. It, it, yeah. I mean, apparently Garcia yeah. was having a hard time. He, he was. His, his whole. Like the synesthesia was way out of control. Right. Paulie Pilling, what was your first show? Uh, you know, the going to Nassau shows. 80! No, 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 wait. Then it's earlier than that. I think it was no. Halloween 78. At the Halloween 79. 79. No, no. 79. Because, I mean, I just want to be, I just want to be clear. I never saw, I never saw the band once. I never saw Garcia band. That's how powerful the great event. I saw the Garcia band at the Calderon. Oh my, Pennsylvania. dude, I'm going to freak out. No, we're, we can talk about it. Because, because, because. There was something, about, it was not a pure, perfect experience. Brent Midland made that group so funky and so yeah, jazzy. Yeah, like Brent's first shows were the show. Were, Dude, were the that show. Halloween 79 show, yeah. that's right around Cape Cod. Dude, and Bill we Pierce played, went to Pauly, dude? And we played that show in its entirety with the exception of one song passing. Dude, I am, gonna I, I am gonna request when I come see you guys, uh, like a heavy dose of 83. I need a lot of 83. I like 83 shows. Yo, man. It, what did you see in 83, uh, Nathan? Well, it was uh, Oxford in 84, 83. Dude, no, no. Oxford didn't come till late 80s. Augusta was 84. Oh, I saw a lot of East... A lot well, Cumberland of East County? East Cumberland County? In the, so, 83, I'm trying to think what I was doing. Really need to nail this down. Bill, you remember? You know what you saw in 83? I remember seeing Santa Fe in 83. I'm sorry, you went to both nights? 9, 10, 9, 11? Oh, yeah. Phil started to sing for the first time in 10 years, played, sang Cold Rain and Snow on that encore. I remember driving in just in time to watch a balloon. I got goosebumps <laughs> right now. <laughs> All right, I'm, yeah, listen, play a tune, man. I don't want to nerd okay, so out. Let's yeah, do yeah. It. Uh, I would, you know, Bill, you've never done this one with us before, uh, but I'm going to uh, trust you. Of course, <laughs> there's half a song, actually. It's called uh, Black Mampkins. Oh, my God. You know, Are uh, you kidding me, dude? Kyle Yuda, man. Um, um, D minor. Uh, no, no, no. Tell the C, C, C sharp minor and D major seven. C sharp minor. C major. Uh, 
I gotta change my tone here. Yeah, that's it. Thank you.